Deadliest Catch. And next Tuesday, April 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, it'll air again on the Discovery Channel. It's been a major hit for that channel, an extraordinary story. And let's meet the people involved. Captain Phil Harris, the experienced seaman and star of the program, which returns, by the way, for its fifth season. He fishes with his two sons aboard the Cornelia Marie. He suffered an embolism and, by the way, nearly died last year. Jake Harris on his left, your right, is Discovery Channel's Deadliest Catch other star. He's Captain Phil's 23-year-old son, returning for his fifth season and full share earning status. And finally, Josh Harris, who's Captain Phil's older, less seasoned son. He's 25 years old. He returns, returns rather, for the third season. Back for a new season, believed to be one of the toughest crab fishing seasons yet. How did, how did all this start for you, Phil? Well, with Discovery Channel, we were picking up some bodies. A boat had rolled over. A friend of mine actually rolled over, and the uh, bodies were in the water. And so we were looking for them and picking, in the process of picking one up. And they filmed that. So then we got to town. They came over to the boat. They liked it and moved in. And was their idea to do Deadliest Catch? Yeah, they, they started Deadliest Catch. Uh, in the beginning, it was just supposed to be a one-hour show, and that was it. it. It had no plans to go any farther than that. How long have you been doing this? Well, this is the fifth season of crab fishing. Yeah, you. Forget the season. How long have you been crab fishing? Uh, I've been crab fishing 33 years now. How'd you get into that? I lied my way on a boat. I, I actually uh, lied my way on a boat and told them I knew what I was doing. And uh, it was uh, in school, a friend of mine was doing crab fishing, and he had a beautiful brand new car, and I was driving a Volkswagen. So it, Oh, so there's good money in this. Damn good money. Now, Jake, you were born into it, right? Yes, sir. Your father did it, right? Did you want to do it? Uh, well, not exactly. After high school, I didn't really uh, have plans to go to college, and uh, he drove a really nice car, so... <laughs> Do we thought, go with the cars? Yeah. So you didn't go to college? No, no college for me. What was the toughest part for you to learn? Uh, I'm not a very big guy, you know, and uh, there's a lot of heavy lifting and uh, a lot of big guys that I work with, and so kind of had to kind of learn a little trick to the trade to, for my size to be able to do the job. Did he, your dad make you go into it? Uh, he didn't exactly want me to go into it at first, you know, and uh, he kind of thought I was too small for the industry, and it's hard, you know, not everybody can do it. And uh, after a bit, uh, I think he kind of likes me doing it. What did your mom think? Uh, I, I doubt she liked it. I don't know, I never really talked to her about it. Does she accept it now? I, I still don't talk to her much about it. Yeah, that, that's non persona non grata. Yeah. All right, what about you, Josh? Did you like it right away? Well, I started off in a different industry. I, what went, industry? Uh, I didn't want to be under the father, you know, the shadow of my father. You know, I wanted to kind of go out and do my own thing in a different industry, and I got injured, took some time off, just about had my inside sucked out to my shoulder blade, uh, engineering on another boat. And then one day, I, I got better a couple years later, and he said, uh, if you want to be a man, you know, come up and prove yourself. Let's see it. Your brother can do it. You know, can you? And so that was just kind of the fire underneath my butt. Now, Phil, you had a huge scare last season, suffered a pulmonary embolism, but given two weeks to live. Well, yeah, it, it was kind of serious. We, Where were uh, you? We were in the middle of a storm. It was blowing about 100, and I was launched out of my bunk up against a wall. And uh, I thought that I just broke some ribs. And so it thing, I started spitting up a little bit of blood, and as the day progressed, it got worse and worse. And then all of a sudden, I think now the, the blood clot was going through my heart at the time, but it felt like a heart attack. And then a lot of blood started coming up. How long before you got to land? It took us, what, three days, I think? Oh, three three days. days with an embolism. Well, yeah. The reason being, he didn't want to go in. He'd try to be the tough guy. Oh, we had a mutiny at sea. Yeah. And they can go. Uh, we have a clip of uh, that horrible day at sea talking about a near death experience. Watch. Do you like crab fishing, other than the monetary rewards? You don't know, think about the money. It, it's something that's between you and, and the elements, and, and it gets in your blood. It, what makes a good crab fisherman? Catch a crab. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are there certain attributes? You need good reflexes? You need well, you strength? have to know what you're doing. Yeah, you have to, you know, you're, you got five, six, seven guys on the boat, and you gotta, you're telling them when they can eat, sleep, go to the bathroom. 
Um, you stay up for days and days and days at a time without sleep. Our record is five and a half days without any sleep. sleep. Is there a, a crab season, Jake? Yeah, there's two. A uh, red crab, a paleo crab, and then uh, some boats fish bear die crab, so three seasons. Where do you usually fish? Uh, our boat, red crab, and a paleo crab. And where do you go? Uh, well, uh, for red crab, we go kind of on the outskirts of Bristol Bay to go catch those. And uh, for opelio, we kind of go by the borderline of Russia, out there on the far side of the Bering Sea. What's that like? Cold. Yeah, miserable. <laughs> Very cold. And uh, this season, I think it was, uh, had to be average and negative temperatures constantly. Are there a lot of boats out there? Okay. Since it's the season, and that's where there, the crab there might are. Be, there's probably 50 boats left. We went from 270, and we went through a rationalization, and now there's 50. Why? Uh, the government wanted to downsize us, and uh, so there's less boats. A lot of guys went out of business, and the guys that are remaining um, kind of won. They kind of are catching all the crab now. Are you paid per crab, Jake? Yeah, per pound. Per pound? Yeah. And you come it in and they drop it on scales? Uh, they fill a brailer up and then they weigh the brailer. And they just fill up this giant satchel full of crab, take the weight, and then uh, pick out the dead crab. Dead crab are worthless, you know, they like can't sell dead product. So it's all excluded off our total amount that we're allowed to catch. Ever feel guilt? Poor little crab, defenseless little crab. Come I care if they had lungs and we heard the screams. I thought they were looking at you. I was walking by and I see little crab eyes looking at you. You might be a little ticked. <laughs> if they're watching, they're not popular. <laughs> we'll be back in 60 seconds. I did that. Uh, you couldn't start a season without this awesome, awesome little gel thing of sparkling mullet rub. <laughs> That's Where's not supposed to be me. Never leave home without it. <laughs> Don't forget the Deadliest Catch airs next Tuesday, April 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on the Discovery Channel. By the way, what do you do to relax? What do you guys do in, in the off, off season? I, know, I, I like drive my car. Your new spotless, beautiful car that you, you got. You better believe it. You better believe it. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. I build bird feeders. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I build bird feeders. I guess I'm in the coffee business now, too, so I have to fiddle with that, but I enjoy it. You're in the coffee business? Yeah, I have a coffee business. That Will you go down to Brazil? Not yet, but I'm headed down there one of these days. i got to do something when I get older here. I won't be able to crab fish. But you do bird feeders. I build bird feeders. Well, uh, Phil, the only way to put this is why. Well, actually... My wife at the time was screaming and yelling at me, so I grabbed the dog and I go out to the garage and it was peaceful out there. And so uh, I built so bird feeders. So the wife. Yeah. <laughs> you said it's in your blood. It is Catching. in your blood. What about it? Well, it, it's something that my father's a fisherman. So we have another boat, a 50-foot boat, that we all fish on. My father, myself, and the two kids here. Grandpa yeah. goes out? Oh, yeah. Goes out. Yeah. My dad's a big fisherman. Mm -hmm. What do you love about it, Jake? Uh, I like the off time, you know. You go there and you do all your work, you know. You get it all stacked up and get that, that paycheck, you know. And then uh, you're off for a couple months. So you, How many months a year do you work? Uh, well, lately I've been kind of taking some time off, but I usually work about 10 months a year. Yeah. And what, is it in your blood now? Oh, well, yeah, it's always been there. You know, I just uh, went through some obstacles, you know, and just kind of switched stuff up. I, just never wanted to live under the shadow. I was always hard-headed. I don't want to live under the shadow of being yeah. Captain Phil Harris' son. So you ever go out and not catch anything? No, I've never. I've come to the dock one time where we didn't gross a hundred thousand dollars, and that was once in probably thirty years. <laughs> it took you how many days to gross that? Well, usually it, it might take you a couple days. We made one trip that was from hell that lasted about a week. That. We didn't gross 100000 You usually have to gross a pretty considerable amount of money to cover the fuel and, you know, they're yeah, out there to yeah, these guys close. money. Yeah. By the way, here's a scene where Captain Phil's boy... ...for all of our bait sacks and uh, apparently we see grown legs. Oh, come on. I'm not going to turn around and spend another two, three thousand dollars on bait sacks because you guys are too... Claim to put them somewhere. Now go grab some help and go look fine. Obviously, you didn't even put them in this container. You drug them in.